when you hear the name? Do you think only of Barbados? Well, consider the east coast of Antigua more than a century ago. Think of Willoughby Bay, where Bridgetown was located. Willoughby Bay was often referred to as the Sodom and Gomorrah of Antigua. It was notorious for being a haven for every social ill that existed at that time. In 1843, a massive earthquake hit Willoughby Bay and Bridgetown sank to the bottom of the ocean. The survivors, shaken, yet thankful to be alive, ran from that place to a new location for refuge. No one is exactly sure how our forefathers entered that place of refuge. However, God has spared the lives of some of these precious people who are willing to share the facts surrounding the origin of one of the earliest towns in Antigua. Their story is authentic. Wilby Bay was a town, and some years ago, a tsunami came in and took away a part of the town. Well, I used to fish with an old fisherman at Wilby Bay. And when I was out in the sea, I could, I could see frames a foundation of square frames, of, of, like say it was foundation of houses, that the, the, the coral goes up in the square. And he told me, an old fisherman told me, all that area in Welby Bay was a town. After the earthquake, the people had moved from Welby Bay, come to this area. They, they, they understood that here was a free, a free town, a free town for them to come. So they said, let us go from Welby Bay the free town. But it was the name of the church. The church was named Freetown. And so the village in that day, or those days, got its name. They call it Freetown. Probably because the slaves who were living in, at Willoughby Bay, they were free, so they wanted this particular area to be known as Freetown. But Freetown was not the only name this village has ever had. The place in there, Far Hill first. It was called Far Hill because it's the furthest point east. Some people still call it Fazil, you know. Like the older folks, you might find the older folks who have lived away from the village for a long time. They might say, I'm going to Fazil. They say, what do you call Fazil? Say, Freetown. Freetown, as the name implies, was the bold declaration of the newly emancipated slaves. Within that name lived the energy that gradually reconfigured their minds and redesigned their identity while still living within an opposing system. The detestable and inescapable sugar plantation was still the only means of survival for the majority. I was born in Freetown here in a little village just on the other side of where we're, we're sitting here by the name of Manning's Quarter. A little quarter, it was about three houses over there. But close to an estate for, by, by, for a gentleman by the name of Mr. Matthew, Matthew de Souza. My grandmother was a seamstress and she used to sew for, 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 the, for, for the great house. And as a boy about five and six years of age, I used to go with her to that great house to, to do her needlework and everything. My mother did not work on that particular estate, but she worked on Dana's estate, another estate down, going down to Newfield area. And her pay per week was two and sixpence a week. Two and sixpence a week for a whole week. Back then in Antigua, workers were paid in British legal tender. The denominations and corresponding values were as follows. The crown was equal to 96 cents. The half crown was equal to 48 cents. The shilling was equal to 24 cents. The sixpence was equal to 12 cents, the half pence was equal to one cent, and the farthing was less than a cent. The most common job in those days 
was cane cutting. We were working for five pence a day for the small gang. And the, 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 the big gangs, the big men who have family and so on, they were working one shilling a day. One shilling a day, and some of them have three children who they look after. So you must understand the, the condition in, free, in, 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 in this part of the world. In those days, it was dreadful to live. Several estates in close proximity to Freetown provided work for the villagers. The estate was by the name of Montpelier. That they do the sugar grinding and so down there. The cane, the, the cane business. Down there was Montpelier. Montpelier was the closest one. I worked there. And then they have Dana's estate. They have Lion Estate, Fry's Estate, Blake Estate was a, was, a, was a way down. And if all these estates finish their cane early and the hurricane season come on, they will send these, these cutters down to the lower estates. But I know that Blake, Dana's, Lion, Montpelier was the closest to our area that our folks from Freetown used to go and get employment. And where did they get water in those days? Most of the estates have their own pond. So the area east of us is Manning, and there's Manning Pond. Colebrook's, where the first school was, that was an estate, Colebrook's estate, there's Colebrook's Pond. The big country pond that is like in the center, you use that as a direction going to the school or coming up into the village, that pond is always there. And there was also Charlotte Pond, Daniel Pond, Leslie Walker Pond, I think these were the senior persons who used to work on estate with the master, because they used to look up to those persons. So the first pond that is dug out usually name off after them, because Leslie Walker was a renowned person, I understand, in the eastern part. That is Nurse Parker's father. He had some 50 children, and he was working on different estates. So one of the pond was named after him. And you have Marilyn Pond. That, that is the most recent pond that is just done by the school. Marilyn is living next door, so they call that pond off of her name. So there was always water. Um, livestock was one of the main industries. The main um, livelihood for Freetonians. So in the afternoon, you would see different persons going behind their head of either goat or sheep or cow, taking them to the various ponds to get water. And what I remember too, my grandmother used to go to those ponds and wash and down there is where they used to know what's happening in the village because as they wash they talk about who dead who going to get married who is making a baby you know and all the different things whose child is going to this school and that school they used to sit and they used to have a, a board so they rub the clothes on the board with a scrubbing brush and there's where they used to wash i remember my grandmother told me a joke that um, they, used, they used to go down and wash. And this lady say, um, I understand when you all go down there to wash, the Lord help you. She said, yes. So she went down and she carried down her clothes and she put them down. The others put their clothes in their bath and they were rubbing, rubbing and they were talking, enjoying all the joke and she was chatting, enjoying all the joke. But she put down her clothes. At the end of the day, everybody finished. So she said, but wait, y'all finished? She said, yeah, you didn't wash yours? I thought y'all said, the Lord will help me. She said, the Lord help those who help themselves because she just put down her thing and was chatting. So she had her dirty clothes to carry back up. And then the next day, she learned. 